Hello and welcome to the show. Now, if I was to ask the internet what was the best value for money performance vehicle, a large portion of it would shout at me Nissan GTR. And while do not get me wrong, I have immense respect for the GTR, it is an incredibly, incredibly fast car. I would mostly disagree. While yes, it is good value for money, it isn't the best out there, and certainly they are getting more and more expensive. This, the current version, the latest version that we have on offer in Horizon 4, is about 135,000 credits, which is quite, I say quite a lot of money. It's still fairly good value, but there are better options out there. Yes, we go to America, we find the Corvette. This, the Corvette Z06, at 110,000 credits, it's 25 grand cheaper, and considerably faster. This is 650 horsepower in what is a pretty damn good vehicle to drive. No, it's not quite as high tech as the Nissan, but around just about any circuit, it would be faster. The Nissan may have the initial launch off the line somewhere, but on the most part, the Z06 is the one that you would want. So, this got me thinking. Could we challenge our regular racers to build a car for less money than the Corvette and go faster than it. You see, 110 grand does get you quite a lot when it comes to Horizon 4, when it comes to upgrading the cars. Something like this BMW M3, for example, would be possible. This ran in the rally car build. I don't quite know the total money, but this is the sort of car that you could probably get for 110 grand. Okay, you wouldn't necessarily build it straight like this, because this is all-wheel drive and rally tires and whatnot, but you can get a very, very, very fast vehicle for 110 grand if you are building it yourself. So, to make it a challenge, I gave everyone a budget of 55,000 credits. Yes, that is half the price of the Corvette. Sounds incredibly tough. <laughs> Sounds incredibly tough because that has got to include buying the car along with the upgrades. No auction house cars were allowed. None of the cars that were free cars, you know, because they were DLC or whatever, uh, were allowed or were allowed to be used to count it as free. Download them and find the value of them. So this is what we were going to be up against. We had a very purple uh, Lotus Esprit, race tyres and a wing, but that was about all the money I had to, to go on with that car. Vauxhall Monaro, a very good shout. A cheap car for plenty of speed uh, going on in that one. A Golf R32, all-wheel drive, not too expensive to buy, so plenty of room for upgrades in that. Yeah, that's a front-wheel drive. Up next, Ford Focus RS. Not likely to match the Corvette in terms of outright straight line speed, but might be able to outhandle it. A BMW M5, a modern Ford Mustang, a choice I didn't particularly think of, but an interesting one nevertheless. A slightly older Corvette, although that would have some uh, technical difficulties and not be able to take part in the actual races. Fun connections. A Honda S2000, a yeah, pretty damn good choice handling car. An older BMW M5 with a far too much power. We start the hideous livery part of the section now. Another BMW, this time an M3. And yes, that is a Beetle. Now, the Beetle was going for beating the Corvette in terms of straight line speed and not really worrying about corners. You could try and specialise your vehicle. Because we're going to be doing a series of tests, we'll be doing two races around two very, very different circuits. We'll be going to a drag race and we'll be doing a 0 to 100 to 0. Now, our first race, I shuffled myself to the back as I had the highest PI uh, in this. So, to make it a little bit more interesting, uh, a little bit more challenging perhaps for the Corvette, I went to the back of the grid just while everyone was stationary in the ghost mode uh, for this one. And immediately you can see the speed of the Z06. We pass the M5 with no issues. This is the Aston Moore Heritage Circuit. It's a pretty tough track for cars. It's fast, but it's not sort of straight line speed fast. Almost there's a lot of medium and high speed corners, and you still need some straight line speed for these straights. Certainly the likes of the Mustang stood no chance against the Z06. The Ford Focus, that couldn't keep up anywhere near with the straight line speed. Now, the disadvantage the Corvette has in all of this, and this is how the, the that's a challenge, or how the balance almost to this would work, is that the Corvette is on its standard tyres, while sport tyres, they are not the full-on race tyres. And these budget cars, if they were going to beat the Corvette, would need to be on the race tyres. I was expecting the race tyres to give them a big advantage when it came to the corners, and certainly for a few cars it does. However, if they've got race tyres, a lot of them were really struggling to match the Corvette for pace, maybe mid-corner speed they could beat, but I could out accelerate them. I mean, we were going past everything with relative ease. We were on to lap two here, and I was up to third. We passed, I mean, the Lotus was really struggling for straight line speed, but we could just about pass everything with minimal effort further back. We could drive around the outside, up the inside, out, drag it, 
where any part of the circuit we could find a way past. We're up to third, though, and the two cars ahead, we're going to put up a little bit more of a fight. The Vauxhall Monaro uh, lost the lead to the R32 Golf down the back straight. The Volkswagen with a pretty decent amount of straight line speed. Monaro, uh, more specs towards handling, uh, did not quite have the pace of the Corvette. I think Monaro's on about 400 horsepower, which, <laughs> well, you know, that's, that's a lot of horsepower, but when you're up against a 650 horsepower Z06, it's not quite enough. The Monaro might have race tyres, it might be lighter, but it's no match for the sheer acceleration of the Corvette. So by the end of lap two, we were up to second with just an R32 Golf to try and chase down. Turns out, turns out the Volkswagen was bloody fast. It was one of the very, very few cars that could match the Corvette in terms of acceleration. I think it's about the only car that could match the Corvette in terms of acceleration out of these medium speed corners. There are other cars here that are faster than the Corvette in terms of sheer straight line speed. However, they can't use their power. They just couldn't use their power around a track like this with all of these sort of, you know, 120, 115 mile an hour corners. It would spin the wheels and waste too much time sliding around. The Golf could. Didn't have the top end on the Corvette. Once you got to about 130, 140, that is where the Corvette would start to pull. But trying to get a pass done wasn't quite as easy. Unlike the rest of the cars that we'd come across so far, I couldn't simply drive around it any which way I pleased. I was quicker, and by this stage we were starting to get held up. I had a couple of laps, so there was no real need to panic. Uh, but yeah, I simply couldn't just drive past the Golf where I wanted to. The uh, R32 go to the inside to defend, down towards the first corner. I'd have a look at going around the outside. Can't make that one stick. Actually get a very big slide uh, through there, which doesn't help matters. Volkswagen ran wide. If I'd got that one right, I might have been able to cut back to the inside. Couldn't quite do it. Again, another big acceleration zone here, and this is where the Corvette starts to pull. And at these fast corners, the Golf's on race tyres here. Okay, bear in mind, the Golf is on race tyres, and the Corvette is as good through these long corners as... Now, Volkswagen's got Forza Aero as well going on. The Corvette is on its standard stuff. And around these faster corners, the Corvette is stuck to the road. It's a fantastic car to drive, this Z06. It really is. Uh, we get the run this time uh, on the outside, and it's... Uh, I, was a little, I didn't know if the Golf was going to have a really big dive, so I give plenty of space on the inside. I don't mind too much if the Volkswagen draws alongside through there, because I do now have the preferred line into the final hairpin. We can kind of shut the door through here. The Volkswagen, if it tried to cut back, it wouldn't have had the acceleration to really match the Zotac. It does get alongside again. I give it space in case, because I wasn't really sure how fast it was going to be, and this being the first time racing against the Volkswagen. So, yeah, we left a little bit of gap in case it was going to be far off alongside, but it couldn't do anything. Once, once the Corvette was passed, that was pretty much it. We could just pull away. These, these medium speed corners and upwards of the 120 mile an hour mark, the Volkswagen had absolutely no answer for the Corvette. So on this final lap, we would continue to pull away in the end, extending the, the lead by over a second. The Monaro had actually done a good job of keeping up with us. Yeah, we'd fought for a little bit, but the Monaro had done a very, very good job of uh, keeping up with us. Honda S2000 had worked its way to four, struggled a little bit through traffic. It was quite quick, but not really quite a match for the top three. I mean, you can see the lap times, 59.5 for the Corvette, uh, a 1.1 and a 1.6 for the Golf and Monaro respectively, a 101 we're then looking at for the Honda S2000. So around this fast flowing circuit, that Corvette, a long, long way out in, a long way out ahead. And that was looking scary, also the Beetle, well, I mean, you could see the PI differences on these cars. The Beetle, a pure straight line speed machine, did not enjoy that particular track, in fact, would dump out of this one. However, that was a well, one sort of circuit. What about another sort of quite specialised circuit? This, the Ambleside, incredibly technical, nasty track. Now, the Corvette, while being a very good handling car, as I said, does not have race tyres. Race tyres, very, very grippy, very, very helpful indeed for a track like this. You are constantly turning. Unlike our previous track, where we were above 100 miles an hour almost the entire time, you know, we got to 160, 170 in a couple of places. Here, you won't be whatsoever. The Corvette's Top end speed, higher end speed is of no use around this track whatsoever. It's got to deal with a lot of low speed acceleration zones. And this is where I thought the Corvette may struggle against the race tired vehicles. Again, starting from the back, this time the game was actually kind enough to put me at the back of the field. So we just went <laughs> straight from the off. Uh, I was stuck a little bit in traffic. That is the other thing you uh, do have to deal with. Uh, back here, I was hoping the Corvette was going to be fast enough to uh, get me through. We have a little bit of lag as well with the uh, cars phasing through one of the Monaro uh, diving up the inside. There was a gap for the Corvette to get alongside the BMW. That would put me up into seventh as we battle with that Vauxhall up at the front. Well, you can see from the mini map how far away cars were running. The Golf and the A class front wheel drive Focus. Yeah, they were <laughs> running away. 
from the field, while third place, the M3, was busy holding up the uh, S2000. And I was now stuck with the Corvette battling against a race tyred Monaro that had a surprising amount of grip and still pretty good acceleration, and a Mustang that didn't have race tyres uh, but was still pretty good handling and able to make life difficult for us. We were really struggling to find a way past the Ford. The brakes on the Ford are incredible, and that was really helping it around here. We couldn't really take a dive, and it had enough acceleration to be far enough away. And of course, I couldn't have a crack at the Mustang because I was busy fighting the Monaro, and I had to try to go around the outside. I was taking wonky lines, uh, being a little bit compromised, put a wheel up on the curb, got the car sideways. Monaro <laughs> would keep that position. Now, brilliant racing. Absolutely amazing racing here as we try to sweep around the outside of the hairpin against the Monaro. I can't, I just couldn't quite clear it here. So we go towards the next corner, actually get the car a little bit sideways, and then we lose a position to the Esprit. This track much more suiting to that Lotus because it's all about the grip, although it gets a big slide on its own through there. Uh, but uh, yeah, this track working well. If you've got race tyres on your car, it was going to be fun. It was going to be a lot nicer around this circuit. You've simply got the grip. And while the Corvette was doing an admirable job, as was the Mustang, well, the Mustang was doing an admirable job of slowing us down pretty much. It wasn't quite as quick as us, as we now got all three cars lined up. Esprit got to the front of this group and then promptly loses two positions with one slide. I actually tried to get both of them. Couldn't quite do it. Wasn't the space to get past the Monaro there. Uh, we give the Monaro a little bit of Morse code. The <laughs> Spree gives us a little bit of Morse code through that section, as once more I find myself trying to go the long way around the Monaro up at the hairpin. I mean, this is not helping our case getting any further up, although truth be told, the speed at which the Golf and Focus were taking around this track, I could be in clean air all day and I'd never match them in terms of pace. And we're still swapping sides, the Mustang still valiantly holding on to the position, a big slide for my Corvette, not quite what I wanted with the Esprit right behind, the Esprit draws up alongside, is now going to be stuck trying to go around a long way, I have to put a wheel on the grass which won't help that race tyred vehicle, Monaro still can't find a way past the Mustang, we get this... There's more Corvette on the back of the Vauxhall, and I think uh, more Vauxhall on the back of the Ford than there is a Ford on the back of the Ford and so on and so forth. It was a lot of bumping going on between us. I would say bumping, like just minor little hurry up nudges as we were trying to find ways past, looking for any sort of overtaking spot. I had a really, really good run, uh, this time to the inside, finally managing to get my car where I wanted it to, uh, to side past the Monaro and try and keep that position. There's still more sliding from the back of the Z06, and now I had a lap to try and find a way. It's got to be really my first uh, chance at uh, getting a move done on the Mustang. I had a look at trying to sneak up the inside. There's just no real gap to make that one stick. The Monaro draws alongside, doesn't have the acceleration. Mustang slipping and sliding around on the grass, although I know the Monaro is likely to fire back up the inside. It's got the grip, it's got the brakes. So to do that, I'm just able to get across and cover the Monaro from having a dive as we head on towards the final lap. As I said, Mustang was doing an incredible job of defending. It was, you know, having to defend because we were putting under huge pressure. Both me and the Vauxhall were the quicker cars here. And much like up ahead of us, the uh, BMW M3 was, had held up the S2000 for just about the entire race as well. It was the final lap. The S2000 got up to third and I managed to get a lovely move. The Mustang just slid too much out of about the second corner. Uh, too much oversteer, I could get the power down in the Corvette and we would be through. Released in clear air, I was going to be running a little bit faster. Uh, the BMW actually, I think Mr. Oh, I clipped the building actually, I think, rather than Mr. Checkpoint and ended up falling back. Uh, the Monaro would also eventually get the move done on the Mustang uh, to move up to sixth place. Some more sliding from the back of the Corvette, we bounce it across the grass. I mean, truth be told, yes, I was held up in traffic immensely in this one. I could probably have gone faster than the M3. Would have been close, I think, between the Corvette and the S2000. The leaders, way quicker. The Focus would be the fastest of the lot. 46.7 around there. Bear in mind, that car's high A class. Up against some of these, I wouldn't touch it with the Corvette. Because while, sure, the Focus lacks acceleration and like initial launch lacks top speed, the grip that that had in those technical sections was incredible. So, they could beat the Corvette at the most technical of circuits. What about a drag race, though? We were going to head to the airfield. We we're going to do this in kind of three stages. Uh, so we were going to have I thought, two semi-finals. The top three cars from each semi-final would go through to a, a finale race. So we had M5 with a lot of power. Esprit was not looking forward to this one. The S2000, uh, the R32 Golf all-wheel drive. I think the only all-wheel drive car in this. Uh, so going to have a good launch. The Monaro. Now, the Beetle was hoping that this would be the race. It was built for drag racing, so they were hoping to be able to make this one work. Off the line, you can see that all-wheel drive launch from the Volkswagen is immense. The Esprit actually gets a pretty good launch. Can't match the S2000 as we head towards the finish line. The train line would be the finish line for us. The Golf would win it comfortably from the Beetle. 
the S2000 will go through as well. The Monaro uh, not quite doing so well with the old drag race. The Esprit is better than expected in some ways, as, uh, yeah, that was struggling with, with actual straight line speed in the races. I would go in the second of the semi finals up against M5s, M3s, and the rest of the field with my Z06. Of course, I don't have the lovely all wheel drive launch the R32 had. And there are cars in this more powerful than mine. I think the BMW alongside me had more power than the Z06. Uh, it gets off the line uh, pretty nicely, does the BMW. You can't quite match it as we go down here on this run, and I would win my, se my, my semi-final, if you like, beating both of the BMWs. The Ford was kind of close. The Focus was never going to like this one. Uh, the Corvette did stay connected for this, uh, but that did struggle with the straight line speed. Uh, the Focus always going to struggle off the line with that front-wheel drive. So, on <laughs> to the final. I was alongside the two BMWs from my semi-final, the M5 and M3. Over the other side, of course, we have the very, very fast starting Golf, the Beetle, and the S2000. I was hoping that having had a good, pretty good qualifying, if you like, I might stand a little bit more of a chart. But look at the speed. I didn't get a good launch in this one, I will say. The speed the Golf gets off the line. We, uh, we do start catching once we're going. The M5 got a fantastic launch. Uh, well, the, the result was a little bit skewed. The Beetle might have got killed slightly by a train. So in, in trying to fix the trains from jittering around, trains now show differently on everyone's screen. Uh, which stops them jittering, I guess, when they appear. However, does mean that trains sometimes get in the way of the drag race, and we don't realise. So the Beetle kind of got killed in that one. Next race, the M5 didn't get off the line uh, particularly well. I get a better start in this, beating the M3. We're trying to chase down the S2000. Uh, the Golf goes and takes victory in this one ahead of the Beetle. This time it's the M5 that got clobbered by the train, <laughs> basically. We, we, we came to pretty much the conclusion we could do this all day and have, I say, slightly different results. The M5 was fast if it got off the line. Uh, the, the Golf was fastest ahead of the Beetle. The S2000 was third. The M5 could beat the Corvette if it got a good launch, or the Corvette could beat the M5, depending on which way it went. And the M3, while faster than the rest of the cars, couldn't quite keep up in this. So, with this fairly short drag race, a couple of the more specialist cars could beat the Corvette. It was close, and I think the Corvette was catching after the initial launch, but, you know, the Golf the Beetle could beat the Z06. So, our final test, 0 to 100 to 0. While, yes, the acceleration is very important in this, we're also testing the brakes on the car. Some of these cars here are going to have full-on race brakes if they had the money to go for it. The Corvette has some pretty damn beefy race brakes. We actually get a pretty good launch on this run. So as we get up towards the 100 mile an hour mark, it ticks over to 100. We jump on the brakes and bring the car to a halt. Now is the benchmark for everyone to try and beat. I think pretty good. Yeah, the Z06 is a, <laughs> it's a mighty fine vehicle. So yeah, it's a pretty decent, pretty decent start. Now the C5 Corvette, that would run alongside. That would go next and nowhere near. Nowhere near for the <laughs> for the C5. I don't even know if it got on the brakes. I think it only, only got on the brakes slightly before it actually got to the point that uh, my car had stopped. So yeah, not so good for the C5. The Mustang, that was a whole other story. <laughs> Mustang's brakes are ridiculous. Yes, I got to 100 and stopped in that tiny space of time. The brakes on that car are phenomenally good. The M3, that didn't have race brakes, ran out of money. And you can tell. Yeah, the M3 didn't like it very much down here. Well, the M3 could get some, like a pretty good launch. It got a good launch in the drag races. It just couldn't stop anywhere remotely close to the Z06. The Focus, well, this is always going to be the area the Focus didn't like. Front-wheel drive launch, not going to be amazing. Actually, did it's going to have a good stop it, stop ability. Stop ability? That's a measurement, definitely. It's going to get slowed down well, but it can't get to 100 as quickly. That's the rest of these cars. The S2000 I was worried about because we saw how quick that was in the drag races, but the S2000 can't beat the Z06 here. The brakes on the Corvette better. The S2000 will have got to 100 faster than my Corvette. There's no doubt about it, but the brakes are not quite good enough. The Monaro, we saw that struggle with straight line speed a little bit, and it's a long way gone in the distance. I will say, we've done not to 100 to 0 in all sorts of various uh, challenges and different sets of vehicles, and this was the most spread out we'd ever seen. The Golf I was really worried about, because we saw how fast that was off the line, but the Golf couldn't slow down as well. It could actually beat the S2000 even, which is uh, quite a surprise. Now, the M5 absolutely nailed the start here, and that does manage to get it stopped. The M5, very tricky to launch, had a lot of power. If you got it right, though, that was incredibly, incredibly good. We saw it in the drag races. If it went well, it went well. And here it managed to get stopped in time. The Beetle, fast off the line, terrible brakes. 
terrible, terrible breaks on the Beetle, meaning that uh, it didn't really work. It was an idea, it was a different idea to the rest of the cars, gone for very specialist run, or very specialist built, it didn't work. Uh, the other M5 made a mess of the start and actually went on the brakes a little bit too soon. So, <laughs> we ignore that run and told them to uh, go back and try again. The Esprit was always going to have a bad time here. The Esprit's acceleration wasn't great, and sure enough, that had shot off into the distance and was, yeah, that was quite a long way away. So the other M5 got itself repositioned on the star line. <laughs> got a better start this time, let it get to 100 miles an hour before getting on the brakes, and that's more where we expected to see from the, from the blue M5. So, overall results. As I said, this is probably the most spread out we'd ever seen one of these 0 to 100 to noughts. They were some very, very different cars we had racing here, though, so that's perhaps... Well, they're trying to beat the Z06. They are quite different. The Esprit was quite a long way down. Not quite as far away from the Focus and the likes as I might have expected when I was watching it from, from the angle I was at, but, yeah, the, the, the Esprit didn't, didn't like this challenge. The Focus RS, of course, front-wheel drive, off the line, can't get to 100 quite as quick. Good at slowing down, though. Gets close to the M3, doesn't beat that. The Monaro in this little group as well. So all three of those clustered together quite nicely. We then have to go a little bit further down to find the C5 Corvette. Not too not too bad overall. A vehicle. It might be interesting to see how they've done in the actual races itself, unfortunately. Yeah, technical difficulties uh, stop that one from running. We have to go a little bit further to find the Beetle. The Beetle didn't really work. Uh, while it was very fast accelerating, it was good at the drag race, good enough at the drag race, certainly to get a second and beat the Z06 there. Couldn't couldn't slow down. Uh, the M5 did better on, on this one. They had some half-decent acceleration, but they were fiddly to get going. The F82, I am a bit surprised about uh, not quite being able to... I guess maybe the brakes just weren't good enough. Or, I don't know. I'm surprised to see it that far down, but... That's where, that's where it ended up. The S2000 uh, cannot beat the Z06. Unfortunately for me, I have to settle for third. The, <laughs> the, the M5 would manage to beat it. I mean, it's not by very much. They are very, very close. And I feel like the Corvette would be a lot easier to do that stopping distance consistently. Because the M5, one run it would do that, and the next run you'd have spent 10 years trying to get the wheel spin sorted. So maybe overall the Corvette a little more consistent, but the M5 can beat it on a good run. And then we have a huge move to find that Mustang. <laughs> Admittedly, when farting around in camera mode, it does look longer than it actually was, but the Ford's performance there was unbelievable. The Ford's stopping distance was just ridiculous on that one. And it, I mean, it proved good at the Ambleside circuit. It proved good at around that track in defending from us because it could break so late. <laughs> so, undoubtedly, the Mustang the best on the brakes, however, uh, didn't have the grip for the corners or straight line speed for the circuits itself to quite work overall, but it will win this particular challenge it will win it will win the 0 to 100 to 0 so overall can you beat the corvette z06 using half the price of a corvette z06 yes you can beat it on certain events on the drag race well three or four cars could beat it uh, depending on depending on the start for the bmw on the 0 to 100 to 0 a couple of cars again depending on the bmw the mustang could beat it the Golf was the closest, though. If we look at all of the events put together, yes, the Focus did annihilate everybody pretty much at the technical circuit, but any time you took it away from a technical circuit, it struggled. Overall, over the course of all of the events, the R32 Golf was by far and away the closest to comprehensively beating the Z06. Technical circuit, it's got race tyres, it's got the acceleration from that all-wheel drive to beat the Corvette. If I hadn't been in traffic, I'd never have touched it. The drag race, a longer drag race, the Corvette would probably claw it back, but on a shorter sprint, which we were doing, I couldn't touch the goal. We were faster on the 0-100 to 0, and on any track that's sort of a lot of medium-speed corners, the Corvette is better. It's quite close. It's quite close between the pair of them. Uh, it would very much come down to what what the track suits, what the challenge suits out of the two of them, which I think is quite damn impressive for that golf, because that was really the only one that could consistently be there. As I said, you know, the Focus, on the odd event, the Focus or the Beetle, for example, could beat the Corvette, but all the other ones, they'd be in a lot of trouble. You saw how easily I just fired past the Focus and ran away on that first race. So, yeah, if you want to, <laughs> to go as fast as a Corvette Z06 for half the money, the R32 Golf is the best you are going to get, but you will not be beating the Corvette at every event. There are still going to be tracks the Corvette is going to be faster, and is going to be, let's say, comprehensively faster, but certainly noticeably faster around. But uh, there we go. That is going to be it for this video. Thank you all very much for watching, and until next time, a goodbye.